الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. You guys remember me, right? I was up here about three days ago. I mean, a few hours ago. ما شاء الله. This is my actual talk, and it's probably going to be the last one of the night. Why am I holding a stick? There, that's better. Um, how many people would you say are here? About 1,100, is that right? You're guessing, right? Well, you guys look the same to me, so I can't really count. <laughs> but I have one other person that is listening to this as well. And I think I told some of you about this already, but she's all the way from Kenya. And this is my wife, Sumeya. Sumea salimia dada zako. I don't know what you just said, but mashallah. <laughs> So that is Sumeya. Now everyone has heard Sumeya's voice, and um, that is my engine. Engine. And I don't mean engine like in the front of a car. <laughs> oh my god. So, this is so odd. Um, the <laughs> The sister was, let me put you on Bluetooth, Samia, so, you know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry. The sister had mentioned, Sister Nida had mentioned that a sister had taken my shahada, and that was back in 1996, way back in the day. And it's very interesting because, I'm not going to tell my story, you guys, many of you have already heard that, and it would take me much longer than a half an hour to do it, so it's usually an hour and a half talk. But Malcolm, Allah had used Malcolm X around 1992, to plant this seed of change in my head. This seed of change, this idea that God is not three. That God is not a man, white or black or otherwise. That God is not found in a statue. That God is the creator and sustainer of all creation. That was the seed of change in, that was planted in my head back in 1992. And it took me four years to actually have that seed harvested. And that was harvested by one of you impact players. I'm very serious about that. I don't remember saying it initially, but, but I must have said it because it sounds like something that I would say. A sister took my shahada. Now what's interesting about that is that in 2007, I was in a country called Kenya. It's a long way from here. And I planted a seed of change in someone else's head. And you just gave salam to that person right now. So I got to repay that debt to a certain degree when I gave my Sumeya her shahada, alhamdulillah, Allah allowed that to me and it was something that I'll never forget. As well, of course, many of you have met them, my two bodyguards, Hafsa and Nusayba, my daughters, right? <laughs> Hafsa who is miskeen and very quiet, she's one of the seeds of change that I have, and Nusayba who is the opposite of that. <laughs> she wants my wrestling boots when she gets bigger. <laughs> Even she asked me, she says, Daddy, when you do the conference in front of all the sisters, are you going to wear your wrestling boots? <laughs> well, 
That's exactly what I did, right? I told her I would, and that's what I did. So there's all kinds of engines. But sisters, you know, sometimes it's not really easy, is it? So I wanted to kind of share with you in the short, short, short time that I have about another amazing engine. And this is from our kitab, from the literal speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about a woman named Maryam. There may be some people in here named Maryam. Is there? Wouldn't that be, wow, mashallah. That would have been so bad if no one answered, right? <laughs> I didn't plan it, by the way. But this woman is mentioned by the Christians. I knew about her before I was Muslim. I didn't quite know a lot about her struggle, though. When Allah has said to us, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ Maryam, Remember to mention Maryam in the scripture. إِذِنْ تَبَذَتْ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا مَكَانًا شَرْقِيَةً When she went to a place, what's with the echo? Can we do something about the echo? That's like going right through my head, inshallah. Anyway, so Maryam alayha salam went to a place away from her people. She retreated from them. You know, she was always righteous. She was a righteous person um, at a young age. And Allah sent Jibreel to her. You guys know about that, right? You know what's interesting about Maryam? She didn't go, you know, when Jibreel came in to where she was, she didn't go, As-salamu alaykum. Jibreel, are kiale. MashaAllah, your beard is very nice. MashaAllah. Do you know what she said? Inni a'udhu bir rahmani minka. Straight away, I seek refuge from the most merciful one away from you. This is a strange man. She doesn't know that. He's the messenger of Allah. That's the first. A'udhu bir rahmani minka in kunta taqiyya. If you are God fearing. She didn't like LOL, you know? Start laughing at him. OMG, Jibreel. Kefahaluka. <laughs> she didn't want him around, right? And he had to explain to her who he was. I'm a messenger from your Lord to tell you about a righteous boy, a pure boy. And then Maryam. How is it that I can have a kid? How is that possible when she was pure? She wasn't out there, you know, clubbing and hanging out, doing her thing. She was pure. How can I possibly have a, a boy when no man ever touched me and I was never unchaste? I was never, like, involved in any, you know, boyfriends and all this stuff. I mean, it's not there, but you know what I mean. I'm trying to make it in a language that us can understand a little bit. He said to her, قَالَ كَذَارِكِ قَالَ رَبُّكِ هُوَ عَلَيْهِ حَيِّنٌ وَلِنَجْعَلْهُ آيَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَرَحْمَةً مِنَّا Meaning, like, it's going to be that way. Allah can make it that way. He's going to make you a sign for the people. وَرَحْمَةً مِنَّا And a mercy from Him. وَكَانَ أَمْرًا مَقَضِيًا This is something that's ordained. It's going to happen. So time goes by, and of course, Maryam, she goes to a place. She conceives Isa, alayhi salam, Jesus. And it's an interesting thing that she says. During the labor, she says, Ya laytani, mittu qabla hadha wa kuntu nasiya mansiya. I wish I was dead. Ya laytani, woe to me, I wish I was dead. And Arabs know this word, nasiya uh, mansiya, means like completely forgotten about, erased, like no one even knows about me. Sisters, you know, sometimes it's not easy, is that right? You got to go out in amongst these people. They tell you to go back to your country even though you're born here, right? Even though some of you are like Anglo-Saxons, right? <laughs> I'm Celtic, so I'm Irish. They always tell me to go back where I came from. <laughs> yeah, I'm Muslim and I'm Irish. Everywhere I go, someone doesn't like me. <laughs> I'm like Bono Muhammad, right? <laughs> so 
especially over here. MashaAllah. I didn't tell them I was Irish in the airport. They let me through nicely, alhamdulillah. But it can be difficult sometimes, right? But Maryam, if you think about her struggle, giving birth to this amazing man, this amazing prophet, this amazing messenger, Jesus. I didn't know a whole lot about religion. I was a wrestler and an athlete and a crazy person. I don't wrestle anymore. Crazy is still kind of there, <laughs> a little bit, all right? But I knew that I liked Jesus. Never worshiped him, I never did that. I never ever bowed to a man, ever. That's something I refuse to do. I don't care if he looks like me. <laughs> I didn't see him, they just told me he looked like me. I don't know. <laughs> they wouldn't let me in the nation, I don't know why. Maybe it's I didn't, I, had a, I didn't have a good enough suntan or something. But anyway, I never bowed to a man. But have you ever wished you were dead like Maryam? Even though your struggle is difficult. It is. I know that. I, the sisters are probably the people that I like to interact with the most. Because uh, they know what it's like to be different and so do I. When you're born the way I was, you know what it's like to be different. You know what it's like to not be included sometimes. You know what it's like to be left out. So I think that's why we connect. I think that's probably why. Allah knows best, but I, I think that's probably why that's the case. But what happened to Maryam? Maryam had her baby, I'm trying to make it short because the time is almost up. Really? MashaAllah, Allah give you Jannah to Firdaus for that. <laughs> Tell Noor that when he comes and taps my shoulder. But Allah put a stream beneath her. She said, he said to her, Kuli wa aina. Eat and drink and dry your eyes. Sisters, whatever difficulty it is, whether it's a weakness in Iman, or whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's whatever it is, just like Maryam's struggle, it's gonna be over. And maybe in the Jannah, Allah will tell you, Kuli washrabi wa qarri aina. Eat and drink and dry your eyes. Because, contrary to popular belief, Jannah is also for the women too. Jannah is also for the women as well. You know, the brothers, and I always tell this story. <laughs> Some of you probably heard it before. But the brothers will always talk to you about Hura Ain, is that right? All the time. Even the married sisters. If you don't do this, my Hura Ain is going to be upset with you. <laughs> right? Well, I know of a woman that is more beautiful than the Hurain. I know of at least 1,200 women who have the opportunity to be more beautiful than the Hurain. Wow, can you imagine? Are you serious, Abu Hafsa? I know y'all are saying that, right? Some of you going, mm-hmm. <laughs> Shoot, I'm more beautiful than them now. <laughs> I'm fly as July. I'm more beautiful than them right now. Maybe that's the case, right? But I'm going to tell you about them too, and then I'm going to continue on with the story of Maryam. The hair from her head, one hair, one lock of her hair. And it's real hair, by the way. It's not extensions or nothing like that. <laughs> it's not no plastic hair from Taiwan, right? It's real hair can light the heavens and the earth, the distance between the heavens and the earth. And the khimar is better than the dunya and whatever is in it. Wow. But the woman who obeys Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, has the opportunity to be more beautiful than the hurun ayn. So, congratulations, y'all. So may I ask you, 
Can you hear me? Oh, she said yes, yes, twice. <laughs> so, this is the issue of the Hurain. So, Maryam, she takes her baby and she goes back to her people. Can you imagine, sisters? <laughs> you disappear for a little while and you don't bring back a postcard. You don't bring back an iPad. You bring back a kid. Can you imagine? What would Abu Jan say, right? <laughs> Betty, what have you done? <laughs> right? What have you done? That's Swahili, by the way. I'm like bilingual and trilingual and whatnot. So what have you done? <laughs> she has a kid. Can you imagine, sister? What would you say if your sister came back with a kid? And you don't know nothing about no, you know, purematrimony.com kind of deal. You don't know nothing about that. She didn't get married, you don't think, unless she did it, like, on a DL. So Mariam comes to her people with a kid. She's carrying a, a, a little baby. And they said, what have you done? What you've done is amazing. It's interesting. Like, it's very, very, it's like, fari. I don't even know how to translate that word. It's like strange, odd. And your mother was, was good and your father was good. And, you know, ya ukhta harun. They didn't call her Mariam anymore. You lose your name when you do something wrong with them people, right? Ya ukhta harun, oh sister of Aaron, right? Your mother, your father was a good man and your mother wasn't like, you know, bad. For lack of a worse word. What does she do? Well, she just looks at him. Looks at Isa, they said I'm in the cradle. Now they start to even talk about her more. Say, how do you expect us to speak to someone in the grave? How's that, how does that work? When you depend on Allah, Allah will do things for you that will shake the world. Will shake the world. Because all of a sudden, what does Jesus say? Allah. <laughs> وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيَّ يَوْمَ وُلِدْتُ وَيَوْمَ أَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ أُبَعَثُ حَيَّا This little baby comes out with that. Verily, without doubt, I am the servant of Allah. أَعْتَنِي كِتَابًا وَجْعَلْنِي نَبِيًّا he gave me the book and he made me a prophet. وَجَعَنِّي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُ and, I'm, and, and wherever I go, there will be blessing. وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ And he enjoined on me prayer. وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّ As long as I'm alive. And also charity, as long as I'm alive. وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي And he made me kind to my mother. Sister! After his duty to Allah, he said, وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي And he made me kind to my mother. He, Maryam was the ultimate single mom, right? I'm serious. She was the ultimate single mom. And her son was one of the best men that the sun ever shined upon. وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا and he didn't make me transgressing or like jabbaran, like compelling or, or oppressive, if you want to say. Wassalamu alayhi yawma walitu. Peace be upon me the day that I was born. Wa amutu and the day that I will die. Wa yawma uba'athu hayya and the day that I'll be raised alive again. Now, I'm telling you the story of Isa, and many people call it the story of Isa, and it is. But there was an engine. Just like you talk to my engine, who 
encourages me daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly, and if she could, hourly, to do what I do. Isa's engine that was chosen by Allah for him was Maryam. The ultimate mom. Maryam wasn't a PhD. She was, some historians say she was in her teens. 14, 15 years old. Some historians say that. Allah knows best how old she was and it's irrelevant. But that's what they say, that she was very young. She wasn't a PhD. And I'm not saying to be a PhD is bad. You know, we're very polarized. If I say that, all of a sudden, I'm against education. I'm not. I'm not against that at all. But I'm saying that your duty to Allah is priority. Get your education. Make a billion dollars for all I care. And then you can help us build a Dao Center, inshallah. <laughs> well, masajid are not built by good ideas, right? Only. Some, a smile is charity, but the poor can't eat them, you know? I posted that on the fan page yesterday. <laughs> It's a shameless plug, right? Mashallah. But get the education, but don't forget your priorities. And being a mom is not such a bad thing. Because the first 30 years or so of Isa's life, who do you think was there? There was no dad coming into the picture and you know, playing basketball, and hanging out, doing his thing. She was the ultimate single mom. Do you, you know about the mother of Musa, is that right? Do you know about the father of Musa? No. Why? It's irrelevant. The mom was the one that sacrificed. The mom was the one that put him in the, in the basket and sent him to the Red Sea. Or, or I'm sorry, down the river. Down the Nile River. The only time you ever hear about the father of a prophet is if that father was a prophet. You hear about the mother of Musa. You hear about the mother of Maryam. I mean, sorry, the mo- even you do hear about the mother of Maryam as well in Surah Ali Imran. You hear about the mother of Isa, who was Maryam. You hear about Amina, the mother of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You hear about the wet nurse of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who after he died, she was weeping. And they asked her, why are you weeping? Are you crying? Because the son, the, the you know, who, who you raised has passed away. She said, no, I'm crying because revelation is over. It's not about the men, sister. It's not about being like the men. It's about you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are meant to be equal to anyway. I mean, how much damage have we done? Seriously, right? The sighted ones. I'm distancing myself right away. We haven't done any damage, except for that little Musaylama incident. Right? You know, false prophet and all that. He was a blind person, apparently. In so many ways. But who are men to be equal to? I mean, if we had to give birth, there'd be no one left. Because <laughs> men are not doing that. That's for real. Men are not doing that. I've seen it done twice, and I tell you, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Whew, he's tapping me. I got 10 minutes. I'm not going to chase him off like I did Hamza, don't worry. Nor is my buddy. <laughs> SubhanAllah. Um, but these are the amazing, amazing... I mentioned to you earlier about Khadija. Khadija was the engine of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The very first Muslim. The very first one. Abu Bakr was the first man, as far as I know. But Khadija, when he came down from the mountain and after hearing Iqra, he came to her. Just like so many of us do when we're done these tours and when we're done these um, events, we rush straight home to our wives. That's what I'm going to do. As soon as my wife can come to Canada, that's exactly what I'm going to do. That's what he did, sallallahu alayhi wa Khadija was his engine. She comforted him. She strengthened him. She reminded him of who he was. That Allah would never disgrace him. There's no such thing as, um, like, just because someone is in the back doesn't necessarily mean they're in last place. Doesn't mean that at all. People have this affinity with being in the front or being in the back. It's almost like a little kid. You know when you take your little kids in the car and they fight over the front seat? 
a lot of human beings are like that too. They think because you're in the front, that means some way you're going to be in a, in a better place. Well, if you have a'udhu billah min dhalik, may Allah protect you always. But if you have a car accident, you don't want to be in the front, huh? <laughs> right? And if you think about it, this issue of hijab, and I'm dancing a lot, I know, because I only have like 10 minutes, and I got to fit a lot of stuff in 10 minutes. I've been prepping for this for two months. You know, working out and getting ready, you know, <laughs> dance a little bit and recite the verses in my house. And my neighbors must think I'm nuts because I talk to myself all the time. <laughs> so, did you realize that everything in this earth that is valuable is hard to get to? Like oil. You have to drill deep for the oil. You have to drill deep for diamonds, for gold. And the Muslimah, she is far more valuable than those things. And that's why Allah has instructed her to dress the way she does. It's not about us. It's not about the men saying things. Unfortunately, a lot of people would put us in that position because we're the ones that shoot off our mouths all the time. Right? But now we have some amazing female speakers that are really stepping up and doing their thing anyway. So that's going to change starting today, inshallah. Um, but this is the whole thing, right? When you depend on Allah, when you do those things that Allah has ordered you to do, you have to be patient with that. Because just like Maryam, Allah will open a way for you. It may not be as miraculous as your little boy speaking not the cradle. Fair enough, but it's going to be miraculous, inshallah, for you and your life. When I took my shahada in 96 and I was able to go to Kenya and give my, my wife her shahada, her story compared to mine, my story is boring. Boring, right? Her story is another level. And may Allah protect her always because she has been my engine since 2007. And you wouldn't probably see the Abu Hafsa you're seeing right now if it wasn't for her. Constant reminder. Constant, constant, constant. One day, and I hope she doesn't mind me telling you this because, well, she's in Africa, I mean. <laughs> so, May, are you going to stop me from telling them? Should I tell them? Should I tell them or no? Okay, tell them. Okay, I'll tell them. <laughs> One day, I wanted to not do this. I was tired. You know, you get exhausted from running up and down the highways and roads and oceans. And <laughs> so she said to me, if you don't do this, maybe Allah will punish you. And I said, why? You know, first thing, you, what did I do? <laughs> I didn't do nothing. <laughs> because she said, and that's Allah Ta'ala fiha. She said that Allah gave you a gift with people. And if you don't use that gift, maybe you'll be asked about that gift. And this is now what kind of brought me here. Because then I started to intensify what I do. And may Allah purify all of our intentions. I'm here to talk about myself. But this is, this is a, a real life example. Because sometimes we listen to books and we read books. And we don't really humanize those people. We think that it's like a long time ago. And they're very romantic figures. It's like almost like you're watching a movie, right? Like a Bollywood. <laughs> no, some of us are like that. We read about Jannah, but Jannah is really far away from us, right? Just like we read about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his amazing relationship with his, a few of his other engines, one of them being Aisha. How he was so romantic with her. Brothers ain't got a game like that, I'm sorry. Sorry. You might marry a handsome brother, but he ain't got game like the Messenger of Allah. Who used to find the place where his engine, Aisha, would drink from, and he would drink from that place. Where he would find the place where she would bite from, and he would put his teeth where her teeth were. His brothers don't do that no more. Ew. <laughs> Come on, Akhi. Like, seriously, tell these brothers, man. Like, he was all flowers and candy when he went to your dad, right? Now look at him. He don't even want to bite from the place you bit from, right? 
They got no game whatsoever. SubhanAllah. <laughs> but this is the thing. Now, just because someone is unseen, that doesn't mean that Allah doesn't see what they're doing. It doesn't mean that He doesn't acknowledge what they're doing. So don't ever feel like that. So it says, just because some people may make you feel left out culturally, don't feel that you are left out. Don't allow them to have that much power over you that you become left out. Because culturally, many of us are a disaster. My gender especially, a disaster. You'll go to the masjid, there's no sister section. And if it is, sometimes there's no heat in it. There's like a little small crackling speaker that you can't properly hear, never mind see him. Good luck with that, you're not gonna see him, you're gonna be like me. <laughs> you see nothing. Or if you do see, it's like this, you know, they won't, the brother, sometimes culturally they won't take the kids, so there's kids jumping and flying around, and I always get complaints from the sisters. The brothers don't maintain the message properly. Well, see, he's going to tap me again, look, see? <laughs> <laughs> he walked up them stairs and made all kinds of noise, see that? MashaAllah. It means I got five minutes left. Nida, that five minutes left? You sure? Really? Five more? Maximum five more or five now? Five oh. now. Okay. What do you say, sister? Oh, 20? Oh my God. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. I got to go by the rules. Otherwise, they won't bring me back next year. <laughs> Seeds of Change 2012. I'm booked. I told you that already, didn't I? I'm the only speaker who books himself at things. <laughs> I just say, I'm booked and I'm bringing some air, inshallah, next year. <laughs> but I want to close with that. Um, a lot of times, culturally, like I said, we have been a nightmare for you. And it's really up to you as well to change that. And that's the whole point of conferences like this. You did an incredible job today. Incredible job, amazing job. From the two months ago that I heard about this, and I was at home getting ready, and I actually didn't do a lot in the month of April just because of, of getting ready for this. You've done an incredible job. And jazakumullah wa kullu khayran for that. Um, this is your conference, like I told you so many hours ago. You did have a very long day, and I want to just. Sumaya salimiya dadazako, Ali. Mashallah, she's still there. The credit didn't run out. That's a good thing. <laughs> Anyways, that is my time. Impact players of Seeds of Change. This is the first of many, insha'Allah. Ya'qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa li wa lakum wa nas'an Allah ta'ala tawfiqin wa sadat. Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, oh wow. Wow, mashallah. Before I go, I'll still... <laughs> Before I go, um, the DVDs are outside. I need you guys to support that because that is how we eat. Well, I could make up a big long explanation for you, but I just tell you what, how it is. Right? <laughs> that is how we eat. When you think da'wah, think da'i. All right, so the DVDs are outside. The Facebook page, y'all need to um, log on to the Facebook page. Can you post it? Can y'all post it? It's Abu Hafsa Abdul Malik Claire uh, after the facebook.com slash thing. You know how it is. Um, the fan page, I post a lot. The sisters will tell you. <laughs> I post a lot. And you never know what's going to happen on that page. So, Jazakum Allah Khair and join that. And um, this may be the end of Seeds of Change 1, but it is the beginning of the other Seeds of Changes. And in order for us to do Seeds of Change 2, we got to get out of here right now. So, Jazakum Allah Khair and Salaam Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Mm -hmm. Da 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 da